New York is one of my favorite cities, famed for its glittering skyline. Eight million people live here. But while they're out having fun, unwanted guests also come out to play. 32 million rats. The city has been trapping these destructive and disease-carrying rodents for years, but so far, all their efforts have failed to control the infestation. Now scientists are attempting to eradicate the problem without killing a single rat. R.T. Press artists in the Big Apple to investigate this extraordinary idea. It really is phenomenal how at night the rats in the city just come alive. After being here a short time, I've seen dozens of them. They drink from that puddle of water, and there are trash bags along the wall that they are literally inside of, getting food out of. And this place is crawling with them. Even poison doesn't seem to be working. They're just running out literally in front of me. It's like they're so used to living with humans in this city. Where humans are, the food is. The city's administrator's new approach is funded by the National Institutes of Health to the tune of $1.1 million. Scientists are going to attempt a radical new experiment to control rat fertility. It's taking place deep in the subway where the problem is most prevalent. Dr. Loretta Mayer is leading the project. You know, whenever a train comes through, the smell of these decomposing rats is really, really, really awful. Do you think they've been killed by poison? Yes, they have. Poison is really not sustainable because we've been poisoning for decades right. and we still have rats. Loretta is convinced killing them doesn't work because of one crucial thing she's observed about rat behavior. Families, just like in our neighborhoods, will keep other families from moving into their flat. If you were to kill all of the rats, including the family, other rats would migrate in. And in fact, sometimes you'll have more than you started with. So you're not getting rid of the problem? You're not solving the problem. The problem is reproduction. But how do you control a rat's fertility? Like many great ideas, Loretta's eureka moment came from an unexpected source. About 20 years ago, she was studying rodents and noticed by chance that women working in a plastics factory were suffering reproductive problems. They had been exposed to high levels of a chemical called vinyl cyclohexene dioxide, or VCD. I was looking desperately for a compound that would naturally accelerate the loss of eggs in the ovary. She wondered if VCD could have this effect in rats and began tests. If Loretta's hypothesis is correct, it could have global consequences. Rats reach sexual maturity in 8 to 12 weeks and can have six litters a year if not more. Just one sexually active female could give rise to a staggering one and three quarter million descendants in just nine months. But can a drug that thwarts human reproduction successfully control the fertility of rats? Trials in New York's subway system will give us the answer. The quest to manage New York City's rat problem is being tackled by Dr. Loretta Mayer. She's discovered that a chemical called vinyl cyclohexene dioxide, or VCD, can slow down follicle growth in ovaries. Her idea is to use it to stop rats breeding so fast, but to do so without killing any of them. Trials are taking place in the city's subways, but will the rats take her bait? If ingested, the effect resembles the menopausal transition in women and greatly reduces the reproductive lifespan of the rat. In the trial, doses of the VCD chemical, too small to affect humans, are added to nutritious food, which hopefully the female rats will eat. Loretta, are you going to try this experiment out? You're going to actually 
try your system out on real rats in New York? Absolutely. We're going to begin looking first at their behavior and their habits. We're going to be looking at their populations, making some estimates. Of course, offer them our different nutrients to see what they like the best. And then ultimately see how effective our, our concept will be at reducing the number of rats. Loretta is able to monitor the uptake of the compound because the whiskers of the rats that have eaten her chemical glow green in UV light. The field test is up and running and will take six months to complete. In the meantime, I've got an appointment with a rat catcher. I want to be able to compare Loretta's results with more traditional methods. After you. Ah, it really stinks, Rudy. What is that smell? It's just rat urine, rat droppings. It's, it tells me these rats have been here for a long time. The problem with rat traps, rats will learn what the traps are. Right. You'll catch some, but then the rest will realize that device is not good. When traps don't work, Rudy resorts to poison. But the poison isn't working either. This is the ideal situation for them. They have a food source right next door. We have Restaurants. groceries right next door, Garbage. dumpsters out back. Poison versus a fresh melon or a grapefruit or something is going to lose. Over a three-month period, Rudy would have laid down numerous traps and hundreds of pounds of poison without any noticeable effect on the rat population. Every year across the U.S., millions of pounds of rat poison are used and over 10,000 children are exposed to it. 90% of poisonings happen in people's homes. What's really clear is that the poisons just aren't working. They're not controlling the rats. What we need is a smarter solution, and that's what Loretta's working on. After three months, the first results are in. 67% of female rats in the test area ingested the compound. The impact could be astonishing. On that percentage of take-up, a rat population of about 15 million would reduce to 15,000 in just eight months. Do you think this is a strategy you can use with other animals in other countries to control populations of animals that are also a menace to people? Yes, anywhere humans and animals collide. The idea of fertility control, controlling their reproduction, targets the heart of the problem. You're not shooting them, you're not poisoning them. You are humanely reducing their populations and allowing us to coexist in a much better world. By 2015, Loretta will have similar projects running in Chicago. It may be controversial to manage another species' reproduction, but the success of Loretta's compound has far-reaching implications not just for our cities, but for agriculture. In Indonesia alone, rats and other rodents cause a loss of enough rice to feed over 30 million people per year. With cities continuing to expand, many of us will be living closer to each other. We will demand better services, better communication, more purchase power, and radical new entertainment. And as we've seen, science can always give us more than we ever dreamed possible. Thank you for watching.